In this video, I'll break down how I created this witch house in the grassy fields. The first step for every project is, as always, to gather references and making some concept art. It's completely fine if your concept art looks terrible. It will help you anyway, because it allows you to make all the big decisions before even starting your project. So with that, I made a new scene in Blender and started by adding in a human rig, scaling it to be about my height so that I could get a better feel for the size of everything in this scene. Because realistic scale is essential to make a render look real. We will get into this further when adding textures. Then I started to block out the scene by adding some placeholder mountains in the distance. Again, looking up the scale of an average mountain to make sure I had the correct proportions for everything in the scene. This caused the mountains to be so far away that they weren't visible to the camera anymore. So I had to adjust the camera and viewport clip end value to still be able to see the mountains. Unfortunately, when increasing the clip end of the camera so much, you will get some weird artifacts. To fix them, you have to increase the clip start value as well. And that removed the artifacts. After that, I added a ground plane with a bunch of subdivisions. Then a displacement modifier with a cloud texture and a low string to it as well so that it wouldn't look so flat. With the scene blocked out I focused on the lighting next. To get that overcast look I want I went into the world shader nodes and added a Nishita sky texture. Then I set the intensity to zero and added a sun lamp which I rotated until it looked good to me. Next I made the clouds in the scene by adding a plane and scaling it up to cover the entire scene. Subdividing it a couple of times. The rest will be done with modifiers. So I added a subdivision surface modifier with the algorithm set to simple and the subdivision set to 6. Then displacing the now subdivided plane using a cloud texture with a big scale and an increased depth for more detail. For the cloud material I want the density to decrease for the parts of the cloud that are lower down so that there are a few cloud free spots in the sky. To make that happen we need a gradient that goes from the bottom of the clouds to the top. To get such a gradient we can add a texture coordinate node and separate the object output x, y and z coordinates. As you can see the z coordinate is going in the right direction but it currently goes from a number way under 0 to a number way above 1 and we need it to go from 0 to 1. So to fix the gradient add a map range node and play around with the min and max values until the gradient looks something like this. With the gradient fixed we can pass it through a color ramp to control the contrast of the clouds then using the color ramp for the density. Now I have the problem that the clouds end way too abruptly so I made them fade out using a vector math node set to length. Then plug that vector math node into a map range, tweak the max value until I had a gradient like this and plug that map range into a color ramp. Then multiply the output of that color ramp with the one that controls the density. The last step for the clouds is to make them more detailed by plugging a noise texture into the color. Finally you can vary the brightness by adding a hue saturation value node and tweaking the value slider. Moving on to the ground I added a ground texture from polyhaven.com. Then I UV unwrapped the ground by projecting from a top down view and scaling the UVs to be the width of the texture. Keeping a mental note of what axis has the total texture size because we will need this information when figuring out the correct scale for the textures which is the next step. To get the correct scale value to put here you have to take the size of the object you want to apply the texture to on the axis that takes up the total size of the texture and divide it by the scale of the texture you want to apply which is often specified on the website where you downloaded your texture. So if you do that you will always get the correct scaling for your texture. To add some atmosphere I added a cube with a volumetric material and scaled it up to cover the entire scene. This will give us a slight fog effect. For the grass I found some grass models on Polyhaven but they alone didn't quite cut it. So in in addition to them I modeled some longer grass. Again the important thing is to have reference so we have something to base the shape and color on. To reduce the clone feeling of the grass when instancing in thousands of times I had the color change randomly for every duplicate of the grass clump. To do that I added a saturation value node in between the base color and the principal BSDF and plugged the random output of an object info node into the hue socket of the hue saturation value node. Then to lessen the effect so that we don't have pink grass or something mix between the unchanged base color and the hue saturation value node. Adjust the factor until there is some randomness but the grass still maintains its grassy color. Since this will be an animation I want the grass to sway in the wind so the way I did that is I first added an empty and animated it to move along the x, y and z axes. Then added a vertex group and used alt and drag to make a gradient from top to bottom so that the swaying will be strongest on top of the grass clump and won't affect the bottom. Then I added a displacement modifier to the grass clump and selected object in the coordinates drop down. Then pick the empty we added earlier and change the direction drop down to the axis I want the grass to sway on. Then change the space to global and selected the vertex group we made earlier in the vertex group slot. After that I made a new texture and opened it in the texture tab. For the type I selected clouds and played with the texture scale, strength of the displacement and speed of the empty until the grass 
grass looked like it was swaying in the wind. With the grass models done and animated, the thing left is to instance them across the scene. First the ones from Polyhaven, then mine. To make this a bit lighter on my computer, I'll make two different particle systems. One that is close to the camera and uses the high-res models, and one that is far away and uses the low-res models. At this point, it was finally time to get rid of these just not realistic looking mountains and replacing them with something better. The way I did that is I made a mountain range displacement texture and used it in the geometry nodes. For anyone who wants to copy my node setup, here's a screenshot. Or you can also download the displacement texture in the description below. With the mountain range done, I moved on to modeling the witch house, closely copying and uh, working alongside the reference as I went, starting off by making the basic shapes out of cubes and then moving on to adding the details like the windows, beams, window bars. Once I'm done with that, I added textures to all the objects. Again, making sure that everything has its correct scale. For the house's walls, I mixed between a plaster and a brick material using a noise texture that's passed through a color ramp with a constant fall off. For the moss and grunge, I used a combination of an ambient occlusion node and noise texture mixed between the objects and the moss material. Then to add some story, I added a light to the bottom right window and an other pink one behind the round window on the very top of the house. Who knows what's going on up there? Now that the house is done, I linked it into the main scene. I linked it instead of appending it because I find it's way more organized and clean to only have one master file for every single asset. At this point, the scene was looking great. Still, I wanted to lead the eye towards the house even more. So I painted in a path by first removing the path from the vertex group that controls the density of the grass. And second, painting it into an image texture I added to mix some darker colors into the path. This looked very fake at first since it was lacking a lot of randomness. So to make it more random, I scaled the UV map using a vector math node and a noise texture as the scale factor. Of course, I had to adjust the strength of this effect by multiplying the noise texture with a low value like 0.2 and then adding one minus half of the value that I multiplied the noise texture with. It's half the value because the average value of a noise texture is always 0.5. When you do that, the path stays in the spot where it was before, only with some randomness. Now I was almost ready to render, except for one thing. The render times were not looking so good. So to fix them, I went into the render settings and changed the noise threshold to 0.02. And then adjusting all of the light bounces to 2. Of course, leaving the previously lower ones at their already lower value. Then disabling all caustics because we don't have any in the scene and enabling fast GI approximation. Finally, in the performance tab, I also check persistent data so that Blender won't need to go through each object before every frame. And as you can see, these changes got us from more than 10 minutes to about five minutes render time. For the image format, I always use OpenXR for final renders. Also, I make sure to export a depth pass and crypto mats for material and object because that makes fixing render errors without having to re-render so much easier. Once that was rendered, I did some compositing, just adding a bit more mist, a vignette and some fill grain. When compositing, you always have to think about the order in which you apply these effects because in the real world they will happen in a specific order so first the mist is in the real world so it happens before it hits any part of the camera then the lens causes the vignette which occurs before the light hits the sensor which causes the film grain so that is the reason for that specific order it's the same as in the real world only one last step remaining color grading. For that, I use DaVinci Resolve. Import the image sequence, go to the color tab and start by adjusting the lift so that the darker parts of the scene are getting darker. But only make things as dark as they would logically be. If you only have bright objects in the scene, there shouldn't really be anything to do with the lift because it simply doesn't make sense for anything to be dark. The same goes for the gain which controls bright objects. For the white balance, adjust it until the peaks of the red and blue channels are at about the same height. Then if the peak of the green channel isn't level with the red and blue, adjust the tint until it is. Then the last step of color grading is to tweak the contrast and pivot until you like it. I went for 1.2 for the contrast and 0.115 for the pivot. But with that done, here's the final render. Please like and subscribe. Bye.